Hello YouTube and welcome back to World of Warships with Wadrace again. And today I am going to be running a battle for you in the Tier 8 main tech line Japanese destroyer, the Kagero. Now, I will come out on the record right off the bat saying that this is not one of my favorite ships. I've uh, had a lot more... Uh, I've definitely had a lot more enjoyment uh, running in the uh, gunboats of, say, the German, American, and uh, on the rare occasion even the Russian line. Um, I've also very much enjoyed my time running in the Harugamo and the Akizuki. So getting into the Japanese torpedo boat destroyers, which require a lot more uh, subtlety and finesse, I guess I could say, really uh, <laughs> doesn't quite work out for me quite so often. Um, that being said, when I do kind of uh, decide to switch my uh, gears a little bit, it I, I don't do terribly, but I definitely don't do stellar. Again, I tend to be a lot more aggressive than these ships really tolerate players being. So, yeah, there is that. And it, it just gives me problems. Anyway, just uh, talking about her real quick, she has... 15,100 hit points, and this is on the fully upgraded B hull, so she is all set and ready to forbear in that direction. She has three double 127 millimeter cannons, which have a 9.4 kilometer range. And let me tell you, when you're trying to catch targets that are uh, either running or uh, just even sitting out at extensive ranges, that limited range actually tends to be more of a detriment than anything else. In fact, believe it or not, your torpedoes actually have more range than your main guns, if that says anything about what these ships are built for. <laughs> um, they do have the standard poor 7 second reload of the uh, Japanese torpedo boat destroyers, um, and of course they also don't exactly have the greatest turret rotation either, 19.1 seconds, so this ship actually outturns her turrets very quickly. Um, they do have some reasonably decent numbers in other respects, though. They have a 9% chance of fire on target, 2150 maximum HE shell damage, and uh, respectable 2200 maximum AP damage. The torpedoes, however, are a different story entirely. They do reload rather slow with a 90.9 .9 second reload on... Uh, and, and this is running torpedo armament expertise also. So this is drawn down about as much as I can for a tier 8, and they're still reloading in a minute and a half. But the launchers swivel around pretty quick. They have a 10 kilometer range. They move through the water at 62 knots. And they, they, they do have a reasonably high 17,223 maximum damage. And you can definitely one-shot most destroyers if you uh, catch them off guard with a torpedo. As far as her AA defenses, she's not stellar, but she does at least have something. It is an AA rating of 17. Um, this is good for maybe knocking one uh, tier 6 plane out of the sky before you get hit by any bombs or whatever. Um, and any single, like a spotter or fighter plane just hanging over your ship, it's enough to at least knock them out of the way and get them uh, out of the sky, but it's going to take some time doing it. Um, overall, definitely not something that you're going to be relying on very heavily, but at the same time, you're definitely not going to be in any position to leave the AA defenses off, and I'll show you why in a moment. She does have a decent 35 knot surface speed with 740 meter turning circle radius, and she also has a reasonably quick rudder shift of 2.7 seconds. And uh, she is maneuverable, but she's also not the fastest out there. She's definitely not going to be outrunning too many ships. But considering the way War World of Warships works, that's not exactly something you're doing on a regular basis anyway. For her detectability, she is seen at 5.4 kilometers on the surface. From the air, she's seen at 3.1 kilometers, and after firing her main battery in smoke, she's seen at 2.5 kilometers. And that's that air detection range is important because her main batteries open up at 3 kilometers. So there's really no point in shutting off her AA defenses 
at all. Um, of course, I am running a relatively standard build for my uh, upgrade modules. I'm running armament expert or main armaments mod one, propulsion mod one, aiming systems mod one, mainly because while well, I could run main battery mod two, you don't want to be increasing your reload time, especially on these seven second guns. It's already pretty bad, and the guns are workable with their turret rotation, but not stellar. I am also running her with Propulsion Mod 2 just because you do want to get her up to speed reasonably quick, and of course Concealment System Mod 1 just because this is probably the best detected ship in game. Or, sorry, the ship with the best detection rating in game, uh, dropping her down to 5.4 kilometer surface detection range, which is very, very phenomenal detectability to say the least. <coughs> So overall, she is a definitely, she's definitely a very capable little ship, um, and again, she she tends to benefit more from a playstyle that I don't readily involve myself with. Uh, for captain skills, I am running Concealment Expert, which is a pretty good skill to have on this ship, again, dropping that detectability as much as you can. Torpedo Armament Expertise, just because these torpedoes need all the help they can get. Just get them out as as fast as you can, and, well, they don't exactly reload quickly. I am also running Expert Marksman, because, again, helping the guns out as much as possible without affecting the reload time. And Last Stand, because... Last Stand and Preventative Maintenance are the last two skills I take, because... For whatever reason, it seems like just about any Japanese destroyer, these, the engine, the rudder, they're, they're glass. If a shell so much as even lands near you in the water, or hints at near, landing near you in the water, they're getting knocked out. So yeah, you just kind of want to draw out as much survivability from those as you possibly can. <laughs> um, yeah, she... And again, as I said, she is a very good little ship. She's not bad, not one of my favorites by a long shot, but I will give her that she is a very good ship in the right hands. Um, she tends to rely a lot more on stealth tactics than anything else, and that's really about all that needs to be said there. Um, I am, of course, running her currently with the uh, Union Jack camo, which... Well, let's just say this camo makes this a very loud ship, to uh, not put it too lightly. But I will also come out by saying that it has a nice uh, experience bonus, which when you consider that I'm trying to grind out the Yugamo and the uh, torpedo upgrade module, every little bit that I can get for uh, working my way through co-op, especially since I am a co-op main, helps. So trying to boost my experience as much as I can without uh, trying to drop an incredible amount of money into the game. So anyway, moving on into the battle. While we're watching this battle start off, um, there are some things that I do kind of want to uh, talk about briefly. And one of them was like uh, one of the... like. One of the videos I posted the other day um, commenting in regards to one of the community contributor commentaries and videos that was put out. And again, uh, the contributor no zoop for you is going to be getting my uh, full attention again. Because, yes, today he posted a video talking about how Wargaming can keep the, uh, sh keep the game alive for another three years. Now, on paper, this doesn't sound terribly bad until you start looking at uh, some of his possible suggestions, which, yeah, they, they, they kind of irked me a little bit. Um, first off, he was talking about ship prestige or whatnot, where I forget exactly what his terms were. Either you would 
finish the ship line, and then you could prestige the ships, resetting the line and having to grind from the start of the line all the way to the end again, all the way up through tier 10 again, which... Oh, hell no. <laughs> or it was if you lost a certain number of matches or something like that, that you would lose all of your progression in that regard. Um, and therefore, players would have to con continue grinding grinding through their ships, which, again, oh, hell no. <laughs> I have been playing this game for three years. It took me the better part of a year just to get my first tier 10 ship, and even then, that one I kind of ended up free EXPing, and that was the Yamato because I was curious about her, and then I didn't play her for six months. Um, <coughs> having said that, the I, I've put in a substantial amount of work into grinding out these ships, and because I am a co-op primary especially, it takes me a long time to grind out these ships. And forgive me for saying, but I have absolutely no desire whatsoever to lose any of the ships that I have actually put th three, two, three years into grinding out. Um, now, granted, some of them I have gotten with free experience points just because I wanted the end result ships. For example, Harugamo, I really didn't feel like going through the Kitakaze. And of course, the Yamato because I just got fed up. I did not, I didn't even play the Nagato, the uh, what what is it the Amagi or the uh, Izumo? Just because when I was trying to play those ships, they just at the time that I was working on them, this was a couple of years ago. They were just so uncomfortable to play from my perspective. So yeah, it <clears throat> that's one thing. But ships that I have spent the time grinding out, like the Z fifty two, the Montana. Um, the Hindenburg, if I were to lose those ships for any reason tomorrow, I would probably stop playing the game right here and now, because I've spent a lot of time grinding out those ships, and even if it were just to get a little bit more clout in-game for whatever friggin' reason, Unless I could earn those ships back a lot faster with that prestige, so to speak, um, <laughs> I would I would be an extremely unhappy camper in a very, very short time period. <coughs> so there's that. Um, he was also talking about things like special bonuses for players, which that I could get behind, like special patches or things like that that you could earn with experience or whatever... That I could get behind. And some of the comments that I did see on his, uh, on that video actually did bring out some decent ideas. There was one, one commenter who was talking about needing more maps, which more maps would definitely be a good idea. Granted, I think we have a number of them that are fair in the uh, rotation right now anyway, but what I really think Wargaming needs to stop doing is giving us cookie-cutter maps. They're too worried about the maps being equal for everybody, for competitive matches or whatnot, to the point where some of the maps that were actually decent from my perspective are really being changed. I, I swear, it's like they're getting to the point where all of the maps are the same map, just cut and pasted, and <coughs> the only thing they've really changed are the vast majority of the cosmetics. So yeah, there's that. I mean, even the even for the uh, upcoming patch, they've changed the Okinawa map so drastically that it's hardly even recognizable, and it just looks like it's a minor cut and paste of the altered north map, which I don't even know why they changed that map for whatever reason. It, it makes no sense some of the changes that they're making. So that that's one thing. 
But one of the other things that I figure they could introduce is a shorter cycle on the scenario rotation, where one or two scenario where you'd have two scenarios available a week, one of the tier six and one of the tier seven scenarios, so that players could have options in that regard, and those <coughs> would cycle out every week. And this would also allow flexibility to open up to put more scenarios into the game without increasing the turnaround time. And it would also give players the ability to choose what tier they wanted to play at. It would also provide the another opportunity in that they could spread out the tiers a little bit more by, say, introducing a couple of tier 5 campaign or scenarios, or maybe a couple more tier 8 scenarios like they have for the Operation Cherry Blossom. Now, we do have the CV rework that's coming around, as much as I may be against it, um, but that could change things up rather dramatically. And, I mean, the other thing that I suggested was the possibility of having m multiple officers on a ship, where you would have a gunnery officer, a the ship commander, and maybe even an engineer or an anti-air officer. Um, other things that they could do is, instead of this prestige thing that Zoop is trying to uh, propose, they could offer the ability to engineer the ships and maybe drop down some of the accuracy values or get more speed out of the ships or things like that. Things that actually improve the ship performance instead of just grinding for the same ships that you already had again. But anyway, battle's over, results are through, and I've said my piece. I shall let you all go. Happy hunting, enjoy, take care, and please do not forget to like and subscribe.